Hey everyone, welcome to Pouring Takes. I'm Charlie Van. And I am Rhea. We are here at Underdog Restaurant and Sports Club after a long, long weekend of shenanigans. But before we Too talk about all the shenanigans from this weekend, just in case you forgot, we are having a raffle for a Dirk Nowitzki jersey that is signed. That is right. So if you follow us, that's an entry. If you post this on your story, that's three entries. And lastly, if you leave a review on Apple Podcasts, Spot, Spotify Podcasts, or YouTube, that is five entries. Um, can't wait to see who wins. We are picking the winner on December 17th, which is coincidentally the NBA Air <laughs> Emirates Cup Final. Oh my gosh, that is a mouthful that to say, is a Charlie mouthful. Van. And I'm not even on your level of exhaustion. I had a day off today. <laughs> I played video games all day. I got a lot of sleep. I'm feeling great. Charlie Van, how are you feeling? It's a Hanukkah Zero kind of Monday. That's how I'm feeling. It I love that a, you have your label turned oh, around. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> here we go. It is a, uh, a uh, s sober uh, Monday here because of all the shenanigans. Not for me. Uh, you know, whis not, whiskey tequila does not mix. Not for so Tanner. Don't. See, Tanner oh, and I, I had fun. Sure. Sure. But, but we're, we're good, yeah? Actually, I was pretty tanked all weekend. So <laughs> I don't know what got into me, but I was drunk the whole weekend. I don't know what I'm doing. I Your body just bounces back better than mine. That's true. I don't. I don't. I don't party quite as hard as you two. I, I just. I was gonna say like you tanked me. I was like drunk from Saturday at eleven till about yesterday seven p.m. Like I just kept drinking and I drank all kinds of things. Like Saturday, I I drank the donkey punch at Nodding Donkey. Nice. Mm. No, not the donkey punch. Sorry, the purple nurple. That's what I drank. Purple right. nurple. And then I drunkenly was taking a total <laughs> wine after the games because I wanted to get more rum because I didn't want to mix. And so I went to total wine, wasted, bought a bottle of rum, came home and started drinking <laughs> rum and cokes oh, for yeah. the rest of the night. And then Yar matey. Yeah, I was full pirate. I loved it. And then um, yesterday was uh, was a Jack and Coke kind of day. That's how I got through the Cowboy game, which I only half watched. Because Man, I don't mental think you health really over everything, watch. guys. <laughs> I ended up helping a friend with her new bar. It's this one on my hat here. You might can see it. Be, Be home, home soon. Be home soon. So we'll do a podcast over there at some point. That's exciting. Yeah, man. I've been like the handyman doing little honeydews. Honeydews? Hanging shelves and, and fixing computers. Sir, you are a man of many talents. I did right. not know you, right. were, you were Mr. Fix-It over here. And Get me on your team. And Shit now, improves. Mr. Karaoke again here on Wednesday nights at, That's at true. Underdog. Yes, you That's are. That's right. Wednesday nights here at Underdog. Uh, I'm running karaoke, so come out and see Throw It Back Karaoke. It's going to be a bunch of fun. Okay, define throw it back. Like, do you only play, like, songs from a certain year over, or is it just uh, called that to be cute? It's just called that to be cute, but my preference is, like, throwbacks. So, you know, come on down and get nostalgic, man. Do you, do you have a throwback song you like to do? Oh, yeah. Uh, Fight for Your Right to Party. It's a good one. Pour Some Sugar on Me. There you go. That's Death one of mine. Leopard. That is one of mine. I dig it. Now, 90s Y, uh, 90s y is, I love to do some Eagle Eye Cherry, Save the Night. You know, that song's 30 years old, so I think it qualifies. It does, it does qualify. Throwback. That's crazy that it's 30 years old. I was going to say, I, was gonna say I, would, I would do some, like, vintage Britney Spears, like, yeah. like an Oops, I Did It Again, or a Drive Me Crazy. There you go. That was one of my favorite costumes I saw at Halloween. It was Britney Spears and the Spaceman. Oh, wow. Yeah. That is fun. It was super fun. Oh, boy. Charlie, tell us about your uh, party. Yeah, tell us about your weekend. party, because I only got to see you at the end of the night, so you were already blitzed when I saw you. Like an NFL blitz. Uh, sp <laughs> yeah, we had uh, a lot of fun Saturday over at Over Under in the village, so there was uh, Cowboys experience was over there, so got to meet uh, Rico Dottle. Before What's he it? had a decent game, yeah. by the way, he played – well as you could in that situation yeah no it was a, it was a lot of fun just watching sports daytime shenanigans watching liverpool 
Liverpool. Having some good craft beers, as one does. Yeah. Wait, maybe a wait, shot. Wait, you drank craft beers and then switched to hard liquor and didn't like. <laughs> Nobody a says liquor? I don't make rookie mistakes. Wow. Always. Oof. We were joking about this literally last Monday. I'm dead. <laughs> yes, I know. I know. That's actually one of the cocktails here, right? Rookie mistake. It is. And I did. I did. And not eating either does not help. Well, I had food during the day, but I got to eat not at enough. night. Enough. Yeah, not not for my body. Oh, yeah. I burned through. Five dollars a Taco Bill to set. It all straight. Uh, me and my Chihuahua have the same metabolism. Burns right through. Oh my oh gosh, my. poor Chewy. Chewy ate a lot of treats at my house. Everybody was yeah, spoiling him. Chewy ate. I did not eat. Oh, <laughs> oh my boy. goodness, we had we had Chewy, Romo, and regret. Ente under one roof, and all of our friends were just so excited about it. <laughs> yeah, whiskey and tequila doesn't mix. No, it does not. Don't ever do that again, please. No. Don't. <laughs> oh, I might have had vodka too. I don't know. Did someone have vodka? Uh, I did have a bottle of vodka <laughs> out there. I don't know if you touched it, though. It, That's the I best situation. Did somebody have vodka? <laughs> well, no, the answer is you, buddy. That's <laughs> oh, was, no. There was, the there was clear. There was clear. And yeah. So you, Feeling you, pretty good. You can say you learned your lesson. You know what? It's okay. We all have uh, what Stephen calls a bad day in the office once <laughs> in a while. <laughs> Um, you know, as long as you rehydrate, you get some snacks in you today, and you'll be you'll be okay come Friday, even Thursday. What probably made it worse was that Cowboys game. Oh, yeah. dude. We don't have to go there just yet. Let's talk about what was so fun about Saturday. And by that, I mean college football. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. SMU did not play, so I got to be a full-on spectator and make fun of Miami for losing. And now SMU is number one in the ACC for now. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, text, I mean, Texas had a huge day crushing uh, Florida. Yes, they big, did. Big time. How's your boy? Steven, he's, so he's really, like, analytical when it comes to his teams, and he actually picked this game as the, like, trap game for them. And he was like, oh, I hate that I'm right. Because apparently there's, like, history between Miami and Georgia Tech, and Georgia Tech seems to have Miami's number. Mm -hmm. um, but – we're getting closer and closer to that possibility of SMU and Miami having to face off in Charlotte <laughs> for the ACC championship game, which is which is funny in itself. And then you add the layer on that that game would be a week after Steven's birthday and a week before my birthday. So <laughs> we're going to have like the most awkward birthday celebration <laughs> ever, <laughs> if that's the case. Well, super fun. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. And then other college football action, uh, Alabama and LSU mm -hmm. played, and Alabama took that win. Georgia taking their loss and shaking up the rankings. Um, that I, was crazy. That that was crazy. Um, do they do the college football rankings on Mondays or Tuesdays? I can't remember. Is it Mondays? The ones on ESPN. I'm assuming it's Tuesdays because we're watching Monday Night Football right now. Yeah, it's probably Tuesday. So I'm I'm – Really interested to see how the, the committee is going to mm -hmm. rank everything. And then, as you guys know, the top four teams are the champions by conference. And then it's like a ranking after that. So you've got a school like BYU, who's currently leading the Big 12, that narrowly yeah. escaped Utah, by the way. Uh, one of the few undefeated teams left. Um, they're automatically going to be a three or four seed, which is just crazy to me. But, you know, we can talk about the rankings when they come out tomorrow. But um, I... I am having a really good time watching college football, not just because SMU is good, but also because of this 12-team playoff. So. And SMU is really good. We are really good. They are good. really good. Pony up, Pony bitches. Up. I'll see you at Club Takeaway. Bottle right. service and VIP all the way. We should do a game day Barley House sometime. We should. Barley House is one of my favorite places to watch SMU games. I go almost every home game I've been over there now. Nice. Um, that or Milo's. Milo's just did their reopening. Yeah, Bar's saw, beautiful on the inside. Uh, Not that it wasn't I, beautiful before, but it looks really nice. I, it looks like a completely different place. Yes and no. They still got the lights I up, which makes me yet. happy. Yeah. I have not. It's, uh, it's a culture shock to me because going to Milo's for 25 years and it being what it was. Yeah. And then seeing like a fresh spick and span. Totally different experience. I want to go. So I went during the SMU pit tailgate. So, yeah. like, I went, I saw, no, I only went before the game because then I went to Barley House for the game. Uh, but it was packed, mm -hmm. like, absolutely yeah. packed. And, um, you know, it was good vibes all around. You had a lot of pit fans travel, by the way, which was weird. But um, 
College I, I football, man. I can't wait to go back. No one's more devoted than college football fans. Oh, I just love it. It's it's fun when your team is involved. Oh. Uh, do we want to get into our shot takes? I yeah, I guess, I guess you're making me do Cowboys conversation, Cowboys therapy, which I don't even know if therapy is like an appropriate word anymore. <laughs> no, it's just doom <laughs> scrolling. That's like, yeah, it is. It's, it's so... It's like we're in this toxic relationship that yeah. we can't seem to get out of. Like Every I would, I, I mean, I've been texting these two for a week now, saying we need to talk about something else. We need to talk about something else. But we'll touch on the Cowboys. We'll get into the comments made by Micah Parsons today or yesterday, um, and then uh, talk about also what CD Lamb said. Uh, but before we get into that, um, shot takes, Charlie. Why don't you go first since uh, <laughs> Tanner's doing your shot for you? <laughs> Yeah, mine was. Uh, I'm gonna fall on that grenade for you, buddy. That's Don't good. Worry. That's good, love, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, mine was Doddle touchdown, and I believe also Ferguson. And how many touchdowns were in this game? Man, it was like my Heineken zero. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. Yeah, I'm here for that one. Nice. Um, what about you, Tanner? Tanner, you got yours correct, which I is even funnier right. that you're doing this shot. That's true. I got mine right. Uh, mine was uh, Brandon Aubrey was going to be the only scoring cowboy, and I was right twice. Yep. Ah, oh, just terrible. Terrible. terrible no seventy-yard field goal. Now attempt, my wife though. has him in, on her fantasy team, and that guy scores fantasy points. Mm -hmm. He's a, probably the most powerful kicker in the game. Did you think there was going to be the seventy-yard? Like you know what I thought. For for uh, uh, maybe around the second quarter, I was like, you know, these guys could do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Today could be the Today day. Today could be the day. <laughs> and then it just completely spiraled out, just being the worst game of all time. But, you know. Yeah. That's being a Cowboy fan. I mean, well, my shot take going into this is I thought we weren't even going to score points. So congratulations to you That's for getting right. that part right. And then my other half of my shot take was that we would see Trey Lance. Which we did, and we saw him throw interceptions mm. and not increase his trade value. So that was great. I mean, it was worth seeing. I mean, we're going to continue to see him outside of them signing Will Greer. I don't know what the plan is there. I mean, I guess Will Greer is their emergency third quarterback at this point. Um, but anyway, Charlie, Tanner, don't cheers Here with water. Go. It's bad luck. All right. Well, <laughs> I don't think there's more bad luck that can already come to this team. Cheers, Tanner. Cheers. cheers. Yeah, well, I liked how people thought Cooper Rush was going to be, like, the savior and, like... Everyone always does. And it's like, I don't know what you have been watching from him. I mean, in that 2022, you had two running backs to help him out. They simplified everything. Now you're in a time where, I mean, really, we don't utilize... No effective run game and really bad play calling. I so. Mean, D did you see Zeke fumbled the ball yeah. at the goal line again? So, I mean. <laughs> it was a comedy of errors, quite frankly. That's all this uh, season's been is a lot of errors. Not to mention the one of the, I guess, the biggest one uh, that it will shine on this error is our uh, sunlight issue. Yeah. Um, I, I watched that play in real time, and I thought CD had it. I Like, mm -hmm. he, the route was perfect. He was wide open. But you could see the reflection of the sun on his uh, his visor, and you're just like, why would we keep shooting ourselves in the foot with home field advantage? Like, what is that? Look, hey, you understand, we might have to just rebuild the state. Yeah. Tear Kay. it back down. Tear it down. Rebuild. Redo well, it's interesting. There's a, there's a lot of things that need to be torn down and rebuilt in that Man, building. Man, some curtains ain't that expensive, Jerry. It's a billion-dollar stadium. It's okay, you want to hear something funny? They've added curtain during one of the WWE Events, I think one of like yeah. When they do concerts, they drop yeah. curtains. Like I, I remember when I saw I went to Taylor Swift. They have curtains. <laughs> and, and today, during Mike uh, McCarthy's oh God, press I didn't conference, think about that. yeah, they do curtains. <laughs> and when Mike McCarthy today, God, he has a sun blocker when he's doing his uh, press conference. Bro, <laughs> I saw that. Too, yeah, they got his little sun, <laughs> sun visor. Like, Unless no. that was Jerry trolling, I don't know. But who knows? Concept. No, it's just like. 
with everything someone says in the public with this team, it's like they're digging a deeper and deeper hole of stupidity. It's bad. Like, yeah. like we say dumb stuff all the time, but we're not professionals. That's our job. Yeah, we're supposed to say dumb things. This is. I getting, mean, we are drinking while we're doing it, so. This some is getting of us. ridiculous. <laughs> some of, some of, not today, maybe not. <laughs> I'll still say dumb things. But, yeah, it's, it's just, you know, between – the issues with the the sunlight, and then you have what Micah Parsons said about coaching, and like, well, Mike McCarthy's going to be out the door, and I feel bad for players, and it's just it's a bad look all around. And then like ESPN kept replaying the uh, the gift from last week of Dak Prescott saying we fucking suck on the yeah. on the sideline. Like, there there are no good vibes here, guys. None. None. No, no. Uh, there is no joy this in is my bill. This, but this, these bad vibes started last February, last Agreed. March. So it's just, you know, the fact that we haven't won a home game since last December. The fact that now, I mean, do you see the level of frustration? Uh, I mean, Jerry kind of sarcastically taking shots at Dak, you know, yesterday. Is he That's having what buyer's you want remorse? Out of, an odor, out of an owner is him to take pot shots. See, at yeah. this is what confuses me about Dak agreeing to that contract. Like, you know who Jerry is. Mm-hmm. You know what that front office is. You probably could have tested free agency and gotten a shit ton of money elsewhere, and you probably would have had better mental health. You probably would have had a better team around you. Mm-hmm. I don't understand from his perspective why he Ego. did that. Ego. But he's he has family members constantly running their mouth about how miserable he is playing for the Cowboys. When someone waves a quarter of a billion dollars in front of your face, I don't know, man. Yeah, but I think, like, there so are... So you're telling there, me you could be bought like that? You, personally. Oh. If I'm making yeah. that. You, for you sure. could be like... Jerry, put me in, buddy. I'm right here. Right here. I think you it can goes, see me, reach me, touch me. You can even <laughs> fire me when it's over. Ew. I, I, think it, I think it goes... That is gross. I, yeah, thank you. <laughs> I think it goes back to a couple things. I think, one, comfortability... You know, you know this system, you know this town, you've built your family. The other two is one of the reasons why also Jerry did pay the money. The unknown, you know, the fear of the unknown. And uh, you know what you got. Oh, well, speaking of the unknown, another conversation topic that's being casually thrown around. And Tanner is going to love me for bringing this one up. There is more conversation about uh, Deion Sanders being the potential next head coach of the Dallas Cowboys because of how awful Sunday was and how awful this season's been. Um, you know, it's very likely that sure Sanders is going to be off the board and maybe the first four picks. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dallas probably won't pick till maybe 8, 9, 10, 11 is my best guess at this point, unless they fucking, like, tank from here on out and they're trying to. But even then, I don't think it makes sense to bring in Shador when you just paid Dak. But then again, yeah. you don't know what Dak's health is going to look like after That's the right. surgery. There's so many question marks, and the, probabi- mm. like, the probability of bringing Dion and Shador is back up again. What do you guys think? Uh, you know what I think. <laughs> I, He's all for Dion. It's a done deal. You think there's already, like, a deal on the table? You think they're talking about it? You think, to, to you think, think Jerry is Dion sabotaging? To think and Jerry have not had conversations about this is foolish. <laughs> it's definitely happened. It's definitely in the best interest of the Cowboys circus because it's a circus. It's interesting. It's not a betting favorite, though, right now. You Mike so? Vabral is a betting Mike favorite. Mike Vabral. Wow. What about Bill favorite. Belichick? He's he's number two. Number Belichick two. would never. He is number two. Oh, I mean, I think if you're You know who was really thirsty for this job? Rex Ryan. Oh, yeah. He's been, like, singing, songing, and dancing on ESPN, what? like, low-key, like, putting himself out there and then taking himself off the board, saying that a deal was done for him to be D.C. this season, and then they went 180 with Mike Zimmer, like... I don't think he wants to be head coach, but I think D.C. again. Okay, actually, I was wrong. It was Mike Vrabel, Ben Johnson, but Ben mm. is going to be too expensive for us. Uh, can you believe we live in a world where it's too expensive for Jerry Jones? Yeah. So, and then I think huh. Belichick, well, I think Belichick is falling. On. Dak and CD. Yeah. And potentially Micah Parsons. Guess who was uh, plus 900, though? Who's that? Cliff Kingsbury. Okay, I heard that, and I hate this idea. I think Cliff Kingsbury is the perfect offensive coordinator if he has a mobile quarterback. Yeah. I don't think he's going to do well with Dak, and I don't think he's a good, like, leader. He's great to look at, though. Yeah, you need a Lamar Jackson out there for you. You need a Lamar, a Pat, a Patrick Mahomes, Kyler Mahomes. Murray. How about Lincoln Riley? 
Uh, we're bringing this up again. You think he, he's going to leave OU? You mean USC? Sorry, USC. Wow. He might. I'm living in like 2000 and If the opportunity, yeah. I mean, there. I mean, there's always a chance. It just depends on what that looks like. Granted, I would put him a lot lower than um, – than like a Bill Belichick. Mike Vrabel is a guy that I thought that they were going to look, or even for a DC. You know, and he's the kind of guy that will really get in that ass. He, I mean, he's <laughs> he'll open those those doors. Open, open spread open those them cheeks. cheeks. Yes, very cheeky. <laughs> yeah, he's he's intense, and that's what we need. We need we we thought we we're going to get that with Zimmer, who just kind of went cold. And but Vrabel, I mean, what, that's was Zimmer hot ever? I feel wait, like wait, wait, wait. Are you talking about looks here? No, no, no. No, he is known for his intensity. Just no, he hasn't been intense at all this season. If Micah Parsons well, that's is out I'm here saying. running his mouth about how, like, coaching does nothing, clearly there's no coaching happening. Well, that's what I'm saying. The Zimmer we're getting now is not the Zimmer that, He's you know, is what's well, like that. He's more of a than a butt opener. I think right now he's True. just a paycheck grabber, yeah. you know. <laughs> just a paycheck grabber. Yeah. Well, yeah. and here's the thing, too. You're in for one year. I mean, it's kind of like – I felt like that was a weird situation. Yeah, I'll take your money for a year. You can do anything for a season. That's true. And it's not like you're going to get fired because your contract's up anyway. And yeah, And why cares? go through all that drama unless something like – Go over there and make a few mil. He must not allow to be college. intense. Come on, man. It'd Something's up there. Who but. knows? And, and, you know, we talked about this. Like, it could just be Jerry sabotaging mm-hmm. to get the pick, get the coach, get whatever. If so, he's not slick about it. When has he been slick about anything? Man, that's the truth. Except that's in business, I hear he's pretty fucking slick, actually. You mean oil slick? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want one of those right now, but that would have been a perfect time for an oil slick shot. That would have been great. Um, Yikes. Well, that's that. Philly kicked the shit out of us. It is what mm-hmm. it is. Um, let me ask you this. Looking at how Philly has been trending, Washington just lost a close one to uh, the Steelers. I was going to point to yeah. Luke. I was going to say Luke's Well, people. Luke is over here. Luke's over here. Joined some wings, rocking his Steelers. So I really just wanted to be like those people over there. But anyway, you know, so how are you, you feeling mean, about that? you people? <laughs> how are you feeling about the NFC East now? It, it, it definitely is a two-horse race between yeah. this, uh, the – Eagles ooh, and the Commanders. Commanders, I was going to say the other word. Um, where do you stand? Like, how do you see this going? Let's go, yeah, Commanders. I'm, you know what? I Eagles mean, yes, might be I, taking over now. I, I would love Didn't the Commanders. Didn't want a minute. But I think Philly is heating up at the right time, and it hurts experience. my feelings to say that. I think experience. Does it Jalen hurts your feelings? Saquon Barkley is hurting your feelings. He can crush Boy. me with those quads. Hey. Experience. He's so pretty. I, I think He's so pretty. Commanders are still in the conversation, but I think you're seeing the experience factor. Do most guys find Saquon Barkley attractive too? Like, can you look at <laughs> – Luke says, I wish I was Saquon. You know, I've never really watched him a lot. Luke, you don't have man. anything to worry about. You're beautiful. You are. I, no, our, I, our numbers have shown uh, yes, that you, you have helped. are no, the most important ass, part of like, our show. <laughs> I sent them all the <laughs> metrics. I was like, so uh, Luke's famous. Fine. Boy. <laughs> oh, don't you just love working in analytics? Anyway, um, yeah, I, I really think Philly's probably going to win this division, but Washington probably will get it on a wild card and make it yeah. interesting. Um, love to see Washington take an L to Pittsburgh, only for that growth, only for that reality, for that grounding moment, because I think that's going to help propel them through the rest of the season. You can't just get away with all these close wins. Like what they did in Chicago was a little crazy, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but now, you know, you got tested against a possible Super Bowl contender over there. Um, and they kept it close. They only lost mm-hmm. by one point, you know. So sky's the limit for that team. But my head is saying Philly's going to win this division. They're looking at it like it. I don't like it. But I, I only mean, got option A and option B. <laughs> And it's I mean, tough. I would like commanders to, to take it over, but I think this is exactly where you do see the experience of the Eagles. But hey, I mean, the commanders, though, they, they have that, like you said, they, they have that grit. They are, they're scrappy. They're overachieving right now, which is a good, which is good for them. You know, Definitely. What, I'll never forget it was the 2020, you know, COVID season. Dak gets hurt. Commanders obviously, you know, won that division, but they had that same scrappiness. And so anything can happen. You know, even before 
um, they got Jaden Daniels and Dan Quinn at head coach. Even last year, they showed signs mm. of being a very scrappy, fun, exciting team to watch. A team on the rise, if you will. Um, you know, you could argue they were literally one quarterback away. And possibly, you know, now maybe there's a hole at running back or there's a hole at wide receiver. Um, I don't know. Scary Terry's really picked up lately. Mm. But that defense is pretty solid. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I, I'm interested to see uh, when the Commanders and Eagles play each other. Yeah. Just to see way. how that math adds up there. I already know how it's going to add up against us. <laughs> it's cool. going to be subtracted. I know. We still have to play Washington twice. We have to play Philly one more time, and we have to play the Giants on Thanksgiving. Yep. And, and that could be a really just all-around bad game with the Giants. Just a field goal. Maybe the 70-yard for you Turkey Day. You know what? Day. That would be a Thanksgiving miracle for me. That would make me so happy. We will get on FaceTime, we? and we will do a shot at that time, and then the next episode we will do another shot. 1, That's how excited Here, it will be. Here's a scary thought. Can we even beat Carolina? No. No. Carolina has a better organization than the Cowboys do right now because even Can though they Can we even suck, beat Carolina? I feel okay, like they um, still feel like a team. I don't think that's a fair team. question. Carolina just won two games in a row. You're not I'm talking saying. about a zero and something team. Bryce Young is actually putting together games right now. That's right. They're on uh, the come up. And they just beat the Giants. I think it's a fair question. I don't think that's a fair question. Mm -hmm. I think that's I think that's insulting to Hotty Dave Canales, the coach. Okay, there and it is. It's that's exactly. To Bryce Young, it's insulting to that defense. Like, you know. I understand liking something more when you can gawk at it. I understand that. He's beautiful. Google Baywatch him. was the highest rated TV show in history at its time. This is why I have a hot coach ranking. Okay. Let me rephrase it. Now that I'm in my 30s, let I got to look me, at the coaches, me, not the players. Let me just rephrase <laughs> that. As, uh, yes, Carolina's starting to turn some things around a little bit. But it's I just think it was an insulting that they, question, though. I really uh, do. Well, I, I do. Like, sorry, it would be Carolina. It would be different if you were talking about a team that hadn't won a game yet or had only won one game at this point. Carolina is doing the best they can. But I don't know if we can and beat a team that has a one Guess what? Yet. They're probably not going to have the number one overall pick. It's probably going to be the Giants or us at this I mean, rate. You know, I don't know. One, uh, the, we only the got Ra three wins. That's right. What does the Raiders have? Raiders. Jacksonville, too. Yeah, right. Jacksonville. Titans. Got so. It's a, it's a lot of room at the bottom. Yeah. It's a party down south. It's a party down south. Man. It's just how the tides are turned. Anyway. Yikes. Yikes. All right, well, moving on. Whoops. Okay, before we jump to next week's game, uh, any games stand out to you guys yesterday outside of the Pittsburgh Commanders game? That was really fucking good. I think Rams, or not Rams, but Lions making a comeback in the Texans. So I was going to say, Sunday was night football game. was yeah. absolute fucking fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, Detroit is doing some freaking magical things. How the hell are you winning a game? When your quarterback throws five interceptions, That's how? Right. I don't know. And Jared Goff, to this point. How do you lose point, a game when you have 4,000 yards? It's insanity. So this is the thing. I think teams like Detroit and Kansas City, who blocked a field goal to win their game with Taylor <laughs> Swift in the house, and she's actually playing on the thing right now, so this is perfect. I dig. Um, but these teams know how to win in adversity. These teams come together when these moments happen. You get punched in the mouth six, seven, eight times, and somehow these two teams come right back up sure and do. punch back. It's it's kind of a beautiful thing to watch. I know, like, being a Cowboys fan sucks right now, but there are some really great football moments happening outside of that. Oh, 1,000%. It's a great time to be a fantasy football mm -hmm. Yes, and we are all fantasy oh, no. football players. Mine's horrible right Maybe now. Maybe not for you. No, no, not, no, not, not for me. Not for yeah, yeah, not, not. <laughs> this has not been not my weekend. Oh, dude. No, I was just telling Luke over here that Dak was my starting quarterback, and I, I plugged in Russell Wilson this week, and I was like, oh, I'm good. All set. Right. Don't miss a beat. Still getting those Ws. Uh, shouts out Jamar Chase going over 100 points in our league. Absolutely. That's insane. Completely insane. Let's Completely see what so, so crazy. How? If you had the stack of Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase, you walked in to work on Friday morning the happiest motherfucker alive. True that. I'm three and six. Ooh. Oh, I... Is uh, Hill playing tonight? Yeah, he's playing, oh, okay. but he's got a torn ligament in his wrist. He's oh, probably boy. done after today. Man, oh, no. I had Sermon. 
He got one point. The Ravens' defense got one point. Nice. nice. I started the Eagles' defense, and they had 20 points. <laughs> had Noah Brown. <laughs> Mixon, though, 22. No, but, like, you know, we, we saw some outstanding games. Um, Detroit, Houston, mm -hmm. Kansas City over Denver. Um, I'm trying to remember the other one. Not Pittsburgh and Washington. I just felt like the entire, like, 12 o'clock slate was just fucking nuts. Like, I had red zone on, and it was just, like, ping-ponging back and forth. Like, yeah. it was just really chaotic. Mm. It was a busy day, for sure. It was a lot of fun. But tonight is Monday Night Football. Uh, we've got the Rams and Dolphins set to kick off here in a little bit. We're here at Underdog Restaurant and Sports Club for poker night and pool night. And, of course, Monday Night Football, there's a Stars game going. Stars are currently up against Yeah, Pittsburgh. you weren't talking about crushing Six it. To Six to zero. zero. And the second period oh. just started. Yeah, that escalated fast. Oh, Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, okay, so next week, Charlie, who do we have now? We have the Texans, Monday Night Football. Woof. I'll be at that game. So you're going with Dad. Well, I am going. The thoughts and prayers to both of you. Mostly. Texans, the Texans are going to need a big bounce back game, right? We yeah. can all agree with that. The way they lost to Detroit, they gave it everything they had. They wore those hot red uniforms, by the way. There you go. Uh, didn't care for them. You didn't like those? No. I liked them. It was something about them. I, I wish I could explain it better, but it looked like a kind of chewed up Tootsie Pop. <laughs> And I just wasn't feeling it, man. What do you think about all the different uniform switch-ups? I'm for it. Yeah. I like the throwbacks a lot. You know, I like when the Chargers hit their powder blues. That's really fun. I like uh, the old know. Seahawks. Old Seahawks is good. I enjoyed the color rushes way more than anyone should have. There were I, certain color rushes. Like when Baltimore does all purples. Love, love the it. all purples. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I've noticed this season? is the helmets. Mm. Some of these helmets have been absolute freaking fire. So I think it was Baltimore that did the purple matte helmets. Those were cool. Beautiful. The Jets have a uh, metallic green. Those are beautiful. Yeah, I um, like those. Jets also have a really great all black uniform I'm a big fan of. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I've just started paying attention to those nuances more than I probably should have. Probably because the Cowboys suck. Oh, sure. <laughs> Who's worse, the Jets or the Cowboys? That's a really tough thing. I actually was thinking about this yesterday. So the Jets got blown out by the Cardinals yesterday. Oof. 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 And the th problem is that I – the only reason I would say the Jets are the Cowboys, and it's not hometown bias I, by any means, because I'm the harshest Cowboys fan you will ever meet. But just don't make that face at me. I'm <laughs> the Jets brought in Aaron Rodgers. They brought in his friends – then they went and fired the coach, and they're still in fucking disarray. Like The hat man is in control of that organization right now. The hat man? The hat man. What do you mean by that? When you do too much ayahuasca, oh. you get <laughs> visited by the hat man. Oh, the hat man. That's, oh, the funny. Hat man. <laughs> That's funny. Hat man's out there running defense, too, man. My God. Like, yeah. I, you, you know, you go into the season, and you've got... You know, they have Devontae Adams that they traded for, and you thought that trade was going to turn everything around because you would think pairing Devontae Adams and uh, Garrett Wilson together, you are like, fuck, yeah, double threat, <laughs> Aaron Rodgers, the quarterback. Right. And then you have a stellar running back in Brees Hall. Why can't they figure it out? See, at least the Jets have weapons, right? Mm -hmm, true. But the fact that they can't get it together is the reason why I think they're worse off than the Cowboys because the Cowboys are bad on paper. Yeah. What do you say? Ooh, it's a coin toss for me, though. <laughs> really? Yeah. I understand. It, it's really tough. I think they're in the same boat. I really do. I know. I know that. Like, I know. Boring answer. No, alert, yeah, alert. it may be. Boring it may be. So, Jets, Cowboys for the Sacco. Yes. The, yeah. <laughs> I love that show. <laughs> um, I think if the Jets and the Cowboys were play were to play right now. Nobody I, wins. I, I do think that <laughs> we the, definitely on don't. paper the Jets would win, but they would find a way to lose to us. They, something crazy will happen. Aaron Rodgers will twist an ankle. I'm going to say the Cowboys. Here's the thing, because we don't have anybody throwing. 
Like, literally anybody, and that will give the Jets the glory. That, I mean, at least, yes, is not. I mean, Aaron Rodgers looks like he is in the rear view mirror, but he's way better than Rush and Trey Lance right now. Maybe Will Greer. Maybe he can finally. He had that little spice at the end of last preseason before we are like, you're out for Lance. Yeah, that's true. You know, but if you got nobody, throw the ball now. <laughs> I mean, can't get much worse. Feed Zeke. Somebody feed Zeke. So he can fumble at the goal line. Hey, man. <laughs> I can't. I can't. <laughs> so um, I don't even know what the spread is for this game on Monday night, but I can only imagine. I'm going to guess it's probably six and a half or seven. Yeah. Um, well, let's I, look at it. We have the technology. Yeah, you look it up. And in the meantime, I'm going to just say a lot of bratty things. Um, Houston has Nico Collins back from injury. Tank Dell has been struggling with back issues. You got Daddy Dalton here for a revenge game. Um, CJ Stroud doing CJ Stroud ish things. I know he's in a bit of a sophomore slump, but I would say they offensively their weakness is that O line. But the Cowboys I'm gonna say any just getting like sacked to death. Yeah. They, the worst. He's got no protection. It reminds me of that first year that the Cow uh, Cowboys the Texans were like in existence when I was in middle school. And David Carr had the record for being sacked the most times Ooh. ever. <laughs> big oof. Yeah, that was a big oof. I, had, I got CJ Stroud in the league, and he got like negative 40 points mm. because Jeez. he got sacked to death. Wait, vague. Hate yeah. to see it. Um, I like playing in leagues where every play either helps you or hurts you, mm -hmm. and it's severe in either case. See, I inflated points in our league, and people voted against cer certain structures this year, and we took them off. I mean, we were having point uh, scores in the two <laughs> and three hundreds last year, and I was thinking it's more fun. And I also think it's fun to, like, play defenders and, yeah. like, score them on how many tackles they have or I how like many that. passes like defended. And we like, don't do a full – defensive roster but we do have like impact for fuck ups you know i like that impact Which is for good. fuck ups that's a stat we need on if nfl if you drop com. a pass that's negative points you yeah. fucked up right come on <laughs> if you can't see the ball in the sun right. you fucked up right your whole organization's <laughs> trash throw it right in the trash <laughs> oh gosh just okay. bundle it up waste management come get this shit bro. so you looked up the spread, right? 7.5 minus 7.5 for the All Texans. Right. Texans are seven and a half point favorites. They ideally should double up our score. Oh, I mean, yeah. We literally have no offense. They None. have They have somewhat of we a defense. We got a big old boot. And Overshawn is you the know, has only bursitis player. in his knee. Oh, oh he's, no. he's dead now, too. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Great. Um, yeah. Um, I don't know. Do we want to do shot takes on the Cowboys game, or should we just do our shot takes for the UFC fight card this week? UFC weekend? fight card. See, the UFC fight card, I'm going to be pretty – I don't have a clue. It's going to be all vibes. Vibes. What do you think, Charlie? Man, I just felt like we're just going to be neglecting to take a shot every week with Wait, the Cowboys. Wait, I could, I could make shot bets on uh, Tyson and – Let's do that. I love that idea. Let's do that instead. That's an even playing field. Okay. We can we can talk about Mike Tyson and Jake mm -hmm. Paul because the Cowboys are really effing depressing. Do we want to have a party here for that? Do we? Are we? We can. I'd be down. Friday it's night. It's Friday night, right? So, so, fun fact, Underdog Restaurant and Sports Club is showing the Jake Paul, Mike Tyson fight here as well as UFC 309 mm -hmm. on Saturday. It is a weekend packed of combat sports and that is just the way we like it do we have a time for the i know the fight is here in dallas so i'm assuming the fight will be at like normal fight time like after 10 p.m right yeah live on netflix how many rounds i think there's 10 10 10 or 12 yeah nah, they did do about like 10 10 rounds yeah 10 two minute rounds right Three if minutes, he doesn't usually. If Tyson does not knock him out in the first round. It's not going to happen. It'll go five rounds, and he'll knock him out. I, I don't. Mm -mm. I have Jake Paul decision. <laughs> I hate that. I, I, uh, I have Mike Tyson in eight. Okay. I, I think it's going to be very similar to when Conor McGregor fought Floyd Mayweather. They're not going to let Floyd 
take an L, right? I don't think they're going to let Mike Tyson take an L, but they need the content to get the views, so that fight's going to be long. Jake's going to be too fast for him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, 61. It's not real. Yeah. It's not real. It's, yeah. it's going to be a show. It's going to be like watching one of your WWE they things. They should have had it just as an exhibition then. If he dies. Because here's the thing. If it was exhibition dies. like it was Roy Jones and, and Mike Tyson, it doesn't hurt anybody. But the fact that they made it, bro, like they want Jake Paul to win this. They want because it just builds up. His product, because people, even though he won't fight anybody, but that how is dare you disgrace a legend like that? Like, uh, it's that's Tyson's fighting to lose. Yeah, I, I really feel this way. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm he sticking to my guns. He doesn't need the money. He doesn't need the glory. He doesn't need anything. He's going out there. It's like, all right, I'll fuck this kid it's up. It's fine. Jake Paul is going to try to qualify for the Olympics either way. This is just Ugh. for money. This I isn't real Paul life. Kids. But if you them. lose to, a, I, I don't care if it was, yeah, Mike Tyson like 20 years ago. But if you lose to 61, yes, he's got some power. But come on, Jake Paul is like, what, 220? Okay, what about this? What about this? What if this fucking shit ends in a draw? What if we all tune into this fucking hot mess <laughs> and watch it for however many hours it goes and this shit ends in a draw because of what it is? Then there better be a thriller in Manila yeah, or something. <laughs> well, Do we care enough? Like, honestly, like, do we care enough? I think it's fun to see Mike Tyson fight. I don't care who it is. Okay, it's fun to watch him fight, but do we care about the end result? Do we care about the implications moving forward? Like, well, really, I think if we? you're anti-Jake Paul, you're... you're oh, I'm... Every, everybody out... The only Tyson... Uh, I should say Tommy Fury was the only one to take away Jake, give him an L. And that was a split decision, but that was a legit boxer. Yeah. You know, ever since then, Mike Perry, like all these MMA guys, you know, he's put them away. And now you get a real boxer, but you're getting still a 61-year-old boxer who I think has to win in the first three rounds. The longevity and the activity is going to go to Jake Paul, who can move, and he's got speed. Yeah, I'm changing my answer. This shit's going to end in a draw. I still got my boy Tyson. Okay, Tyson, draw, Jake, Jake Paul. Paul. Take it right here from Carl the Tooth Williams. Okay, so from one fight card to another, moving on, UFC 309 will be taking place at Madison Square Garden yeah. this Saturday, the long-awaited John Jones-Stipe Miocic fight for the heavyweight crown. Fucking finally, Charlie Van. Finally, I mean, one this year fight, later. <laughs> this fight should have happened years ago, right? <laughs> well, if, if, if John had moved up, yes. Uh, but this is, you know, a year, you know, year in the making. Uh, I don't know how Phil. Like I'm, I'm excited, but I'm also like because it's it's been a minute, you know. Stipe, what, 42, 43? I mean, I still feel like, you know he has the 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 IQ, but when you keep pushing fights off, and I know it wasn't their fault. John got hurt, but you know, I like you said, I would have loved to see a couple years ago if John would have moved up sooner to heavyweight. So the one thing you got to remember about Sipe is this man is a fucking firefighter. Yeah. He is in shape 24-7, 365. And he is, at his peak, he was the most dominant heavyweight of all time, right? The guy is one of the most well-rounded fighters, specifically for the heavyweight division. He ain't a stand and bang and fall over after one round kind of guy. He had the cardio. He had the wrestling. And he has exquisite boxing. Um this is so exciting for me because I feel like John Jones kind of matches up on all those counts. I think John Jones, when he was a 205er, had the best cardio. I think he had the best striking. I think he could wrestle when he absolutely had to. He did struggle with guys that are taller than him when you think about when he fought Tiago Santos and when he fought um, Dominic Reyes. Those were struggles. He still won, but those were the only times you saw little like kinks in the armor. So given that, Plus, you add two or three years. I feel like it's such a like pick pick them. It's a total. Toss well, up. I think that's my worry with Stipe. The 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 longevity, of the time off, 2021, the last time we saw him, which was that loss to you know knockout loss to Francis Ngannou. Yes, he's a fighter fighter, but they're still being active inside that cage. And yes, John got hurt, but he's at least had a year remove. And so, I mean, technically wise, IQ wise, Stipe should you know definitely make it a fight i'm just intri i'm just interested to see what both of their accuracy and reaction time is gonna be i do you know i know who the who the real number one guy is and we'll see if that happens but i think uh 
Long game, John Jones. So you're going John Jones in how many rounds? I think he can win it within three submission. Okay. You're not going to knock out Steve. I'm going to go. Uh, this is going to be an absolute fucking grinder yeah. of a fight. I don't think it ends uh, with a submission or a knockout. This shit's going to go to decision. Mm -hmm. And if it does go to decision, I'm rolling with the big white man, Stipe Miocic, who is one of my all-time favorite fighters. I, I love can't Stipe. Help it. Uh, Hart says Stipe. Uh, Head even says Stipe. This is one time I, I am all in. All in. The only thing I have to say about that is you don't spend a lot of time punching fires. Yeah, <laughs> but you got to be able to breathe in fire. Well, what's going to be interesting is the the takedown defense. And, yes, Steve is resident, but John Jones, man, look what he did to D.C. I mean, that guy is the Olympian. And, like, so that's going to be the big thing. And hey, but is, so was Ray Gunn. Stay. <laughs> yeah. For, uh, now officially retired from uh, breaking. Yeah. But we'll see. I hope it's, I just hope it's a good fight. I hope so, too. I really do. You know, especially um, for all the buildup, the delay. It's MSG. I just hope both teams have fun. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? This could be the last ride for both these guys. Yeah. There's a very high chance that doesn't matter who wins, they're going to hold the belt for a hot second and just be like, I'm done. Yeah. Well, I mean. I, mean, I, I could see John Jones possibly defending one, uh, one time. But I think if Stipe wins, he's going to ride off to the sunset with that thing. He is not going to defend. He's just going to be like, mic drop, I'm out. This is what I came back for. This is all I needed. And you know what? It wouldn't shock me if John Jones does the same thing, especially with the way he's been handling these Tom Aspinall questions. Yeah. Well, I mean, here's the thing. Like, I, I, I don't feel like either one guy is intimidated of anybody on the planet. However, there's always a high risk. Yeah, when you're going absolutely. up. <laughs> and so, and Tom is at high risk. I mean, he's a freight train. He's younger. He's faster. And so that's even a fight. Even if you possibly win, you're not walking out the same. And yeah. at their age, I mean. And their legacies, like, yeah. it's fine. They They've don't done need, everything. They don't need to do more. And you know what? As a fight fan, I would, I'd be happy either way. If both those guys retire Saturday, I'm good. Because mm -hmm. you know what that opens the door for? Tom Aspinall and Alex Perea. Mmm. Oh, Luke does not like this. Well, it depends on how the the. <laughs> I heard it, it depends on how if Perea Ankalov goes, especially from the wrestling aspect, because I don't believe Ankalov is going to go stand with Perea like he says he is. That would be title <laughs> stupidity. <laughs> Absolutely, but I'm just saying, like yeah. moving forward, the state of MMA is in such great hands with you know these left uh, these stars that are. I was going to call. Your leftovers. leftovers? <laughs> they are not leftovers. That was the wrong word. Thanksgiving's coming up. Oh goodness, that was the fireball talking. No, I'm saying with this next generation of fighters, they're exciting. People are tuning in more so than they used to. Um, everybody fucking loves Alex Perea. We yeah. talk about it like every other episode at this point. How much we love this guy. So I would love to see him come up to the heavyweight division and see what he can do what mess he can make and possibly be the first guy to have three belts in three different divisions that's pretty good gangs it would be so let me ask you this the co-main for 309 is our buddy chucky olives <laughs> charles, charles Oliveira, Oliveira, and michael chandler who finally is getting a fight after being on ice waiting for conor mcgregor which i called would never happen so here we are how do we see this big battle at 155 shaking out? I got Charles Oliveira. Uh, you know, one, the activity. Activity is huge. Charles is so quick, so fast. I mean, look, we know how we – saw, we saw this fight happen before. Now, can Michael make, you know, changes? For sure. I think the way he wins, if he doesn't catch him flesh right off the bat in the front, he's got to go back to utilizing his wrestling. I know he loves these gunfights. They're exciting. But you're not going to win that with Charles Oliveira. You know, I was in the building when they fought the first time yeah. in Houston. I went to that fight. It's Luke's face right now. <laughs> yes. I went to Houston to watch Charles Oliveira and Michael Chandler the first time. And you know what happened in that fight, Charlie? Michael Chandler knocked him down early. Yeah. But Charles Oliveira has the stamina, mm -hmm. has the power, the strength, whatever the fuck you call it, got his ass back up and mm -hmm. won that fight. And not just won. He dominated after that point. He was the clear winner. Now, sometimes you just need your ass run a little bit. You ever, like, get so tired and you just tell your friend to, like, slap you across the face and you feel like a, you've been reborn? That's essentially what happened to Charles Oliveira. Well, yeah. 
but that's kind of how he, his, a lot of his career, you know, he'll get touched, he'll get rocked, and then he just got to has to keep going. He makes those adjustments, and that's why he was the champion. And I you don't want to make him angry. Michael, Michael's such a fun style, but his style is also his biggest like downfall in a lot of these fights. Now, the Michael that I used to always like, who was the Bellator champion, he utilized that wrestling in, and he doesn't really do it. And he goes <laughs> shot for shot, and that could be fun, but and then you don't want to do and it, then Charles. You factor in the fact that Michael Chandler was training for Conor McGregor, who is a completely different mm -hmm. fighter than yeah. Charles Oliveira, right? And yes, they fought before in the past, but you spent two years getting ready for a fight that never happened. That's got to play into it some way, somehow. And I'm, I'm rolling with you. This is one of the few times I'm going to be Was that a grappling pun? Yes, it was. <laughs> Actually, nice. it was. Uh, but I'm going to agree with you and be boring and say, you know what? I do also have Charles Oliveira in this fight. He's one of my favorite fighters as well. I have, like I said, I've seen him in person. I know what he's capable of. I feel like he's very well-rounded. And I just feel like Michael Chandler just waited, wasted a buttload of time waiting for Cinderella to come back from the ball. So what happens if Chandler loses? His last win was Tony Ferguson, May 2022. Woof. Which, by the way, great knockout. Uh, I'm not going to say his career is over or anything like that. 155 is so fucking crazy. You have the possibility of a Max Holloway, right? Yeah. Max is now on the table at 155. Could you see Michael Chandler and Max Holloway being a potential fight if Max doesn't get dusted? Yeah, I mean, that's a possibility. I mean, but for the – so is he still the BMF time? So he's still the BMF. He's still the BMF. And you know what? No, I'd rather see Holloway, Charles Oliveira, too. That's fair enough, but I'm saying from, like, uh, Michael Chandler's perspective, yeah. you were promised a huge fucking payday yeah. by fighting Conor McGregor. If you're going to fight Max Holloway, that's the next best thing. That is something he can go into negotiations with and say, you promised me this pay-per-view. Mm. I'm never going to see this money. Max is a huge pay-per-view draw. This is how you make it right with me, Uncle Dana. Is that a possibility? Possibly. Or we get him and Geishi, too. That was such a fucking fun fight, too. 155 is hands down one of the most fun divisions. Like, all of those guys can stand and bang, or they can totally choke you out. Like, it's so fun. Yeah, and you still have, uh, I, I'm sure, one guy who would love to get his L back from him, Dan Hooker. He's in oh, the mix. Yeah. Uh, Dan Hooker 2.0. Yeah. Blonde hair and tattoos. Yeah. Ooh, hey, he remember when Charles looking. changed to <laughs> blonde hair? He got yeah. on a win streak. The yeah, yeah. The Char Charles Oliveira also has tattoos. No, did you ever hear the story about Dan Ho Hooker? Hooker? Dan Hooker? He, when COVID was going on and he was having to travel for the fights, he couldn't see his family. Yeah. And it really, like, messed with his head. Like, he got really depressed. And he took, like, a, I forgot who he lost to at that point. But he took a big loss, and he just decided to be like, you know what? I am just going to fucking train and do nothing else. That's when he dyed his hair blonde. That's when he got his whole body tatted up. And he just became this better evolution of himself in yeah. the octagon. And it's it's paying dividends right now in more ways than one, if you know what I mean. Just not for Joe Burrow? No, Joe Burrow needs <laughs> tattoos before I can say anything nice about him. No, yeah. No, 155 is exciting. Um, there's so many great matchups you can make, but I think just going back to Charles and Michael, I mean, it should be fireworks at least within the first 30 seconds. Yeah, well, we'll see. I'm, I'm very excited for this card. Are there any other fights on this card that you're, like, really looking forward to? Well, shout out to our guys, Ramiz and Damon. Uh, they're going to be fighting this weekend, so super excited to see Fortis represented. Yeah, of course, and Coach Safe leading the way, you know. Uh, he seems to always uh, pull out the best of these guys on the biggest stages. And uh, I know personally, Ramiz Brahimaj has been dying to fight at MSG, being from New York originally. Yeah. Uh, so this is a huge moment for him, and I, I just couldn't be happier for my for my brother. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna, it should be. It's going to be a stack card. I'm excited. It is here. May it completely happen. We got a whole week. So <laughs> I know. Are you are you just like waiting on pins and needles? You're like hoping nothing bad happens between oh, for now sure. and Saturday. Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah, I know. For sure, I'm uh, I'm very nervous always until it's Friday night. Well, like we said, Underdog Restaurant and Sports Club will have the Jake Paul, Mike Tyson fight Friday night and UFC 309 Saturday night. <laughs> this is the place to be. And like we said, we're here on a Monday. Happy hour ended at 7, so only 30 minutes ago, which is lovely. Uh, they got poker going. They got pool going. And on Wednesdays, our boy Tanner is here hosting Throw It, Throw it Back. <laughs> 
Robert. Throw it back. <laughs> Throw it down. <laughs> Throw it back. <laughs> Throw it back, karaoke. <laughs> um, okay. Any other Dallas sports items you want to get into? I mean, we got the stars. Oh, we got on the right stars. Now. We got a raffle. Oh yes, we do have a you raffle. I was, gonna, I was gonna do the raffle after we did the sports update. True. You know, order of operations. <laughs> Stick with it. Well, <laughs> Rhea, real quick, what do you think? Um, you know, the Mavs right now. I think they're five and five. Yeah, we had two really tough losses back to back yeah. against uh, Denver and Phoenix yeah. here at home. Uh, both games decided by one was decided by a point, one was decided by two points. I believe. Yeah. Um, you know what? I, I just chalk it up to this team gelling and understanding each other. Yeah. I think Luca looks a little gimpy, but he always looks gimpy. Um, I would say it just it's just going to take some time for a Clay, Ma uh, Clay Matthews. <laughs> what? <laughs> Clay Thompson. What? Sorry, that I've got hot blonde guys on my on my brain right <laughs> what, now. What from ten years ago? <laughs> Are we going to play what? some blonde? Ever since he wasn't pitch perfect, I'm like, this man is attractive. Oh, boy. Anyway, okay. We'll just play cups. <laughs> do, 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 do. I can Whatever. do it. I can do it. And I can direct You my should favorite. do it at karaoke on Wednesday. On Wednesday. You, you're, like, dying to hear me sing. I know that. It's true. Uh, I got to know what everybody's chops are. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... Anyway, Clay Thompson, um, it's just going to take some time for that offense to get together. They do need to play better defense. They cannot be giving up 120 points a game. It's not going to cut it. Uh, I believe Tuesday also starts, leading into Tanner's point over here, Tuesday starts the in-season tournament, a.k.a. Ooh. the battle for the Emirates Cup. And why is that important, Charlie Van? Let me tell you. We are giving away a signed Dirk Nowitzki jersey. True that. If you follow us, that is one entry. If you post this on your story like Luke just did, that is three entries. There you go, Luke. And, <laughs> <laughs> and five entries if you leave a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify Podcasts or on YouTube. Um, like I said, it is a signed Dirk Nowitzki jersey. It's signed by the king, the man himself, the the president of Dallas, if you will. Yeah, he gets a key to the city. He does. Absolutely. I mean, the, yeah. there is a whole ass street named after him. Like, right. We are the champions. He has a key of all Wow, of our you did hearts. that so well. Oh, you almost had a Luke moment. My Spider Man senses, though. Yeah, because you're not actually drinking. <laughs> anyway, all right, fam. Uh, anything else you want to add? Man, keep supporting. Yeah. Got a lot of great stuff coming up uh, we, here in the area. Are we here Monday? We are here Monday. Sweet. You know what I'm going to do Monday? I'm going to do a special special treat for our audience. And no, I'm going to keep all my clothes on. Thanks for asking. Just going to say. We are <laughs> going to mind. sample. We are going to sample some cocktails. Ooh. 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 I think it is time for us to work this happy hour cocktail menu and get away from the beer and start hitting That's true. some interesting items on that menu. I've been I was thinking about it today. I was like, I need to know what this heavy hitter cocktail tastes like cuz I keep saying I'm a heavy hitter. <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah. Let's do it. Cocktails next week. Or are we here Tuesday? Because Monday is the Cowboy game. Actually, we should be here Monday. That makes so much sense. Yeah. But I have tickets. Oh, you're not here Monday. Oh, you're we're not, not here. here. Oh, well, maybe we get Luke. We'll see. We'll see. Monday or Tuesday. Come see us. <laughs> we're It'll around. probably be Tuesday if we don't have Charlie. True but, that. But you know what? That's okay. Well, either way, cocktails will be had. Yes. And that's right? the important part. Have a good time. Yes, Let's it will do be. It. All, All right. right. Shout out to our regulars. Thank you for choo uh, choosing us. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in. <laughs> Cheesy moms choose. I am definitely, cake. definitely had more alcohol than I probably should have on an empty stomach. <laughs> All right. Cheers, y'all. Have a great week. Cheers. <laughs>